What's up guys, on today's episode, we're gonna be working on this unrestored 1965 911, and this thing is really, really cool. What we're gonna do is compound, polish it, and get it all ready to go. What's interesting about this is it's a Swedish car. What do I mean by that? It was actually in Sweden a couple of days ago and got shipped over here to get detailed. A lot of you are asking, why would you not just get on a plane yourself and detail it? Well, this car is staying here and being donated to the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan. So we have a lot of work to do, get this prepped, and we're gonna bring it down there and donate this car. How cool is that? That and a lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. Uh, all the way in so that they sit on top. Oh. Touch up paint on. Can hear it. They get it just enough to the top. All right guys, this job just got really interesting. So we're gonna go over a few things here. This is a 1965 car, so the paint is very, very soft. There's no standard clear coat like the new cars today. What does that mean for us detailers? That means this is coming off very rapidly. Now, we walked around the car, we did a paint depth gauge with the alcometer, and it's about between four, five, six in some cases, which would be good, but it's a little on the, on the low side. It's an older car and hasn't been restored, that kind of thing. The whole point of this going into MoMA is that it hasn't been restored. I'm going to just kind of give it a nice little facelift before it goes on display. So. I took my standard microfiber cutting pad and I went with uh, one, 100, M100, and it, it corrected the paint. The problem is there is so much paint coming off that it is clogging up the microfiber cutting pad. And the way that you sort of see that is, one, the pad doesn't um, vibrate the same. You can kind of feel it as you get a little bit more experience. You can see it, it just, it's getting so full that it's like bouncing, right? The second thing is the, the stickiness and the residue left over here that you can't wipe it off. I keep wiping and wiping, so you have to put water on it to wipe it off, which is a huge pain in the butt. So, if you guys remember back from when we did the Air Force One video, uh, we used a special pad, and I don't really use them that often, and I'll explain to you a little story here. So, what's really good for crazy residue is these, micro, these uh, Meguiar's um, foam pads. They just kind of chew up the residue, hold it inside until you blow it out, and it doesn't really constantly keep throwing it back at the paint and leave the stickiness. So when I use these, I can just wipe the paint and it comes right off. Okay, here's a little side note. When I went in, because I don't use these a lot, I'll pull this in close, but if you can see, this one is deformed. And it got deformed because it was sitting at the bottom of my, uh, my toolbox there, and there was too much weight on it. And when there's too much weight on it, obviously it gets deformed. Why does this matter? When I put that on the machine, the machine was wobbling like this, going crazy, and it was throwing off how it was restoring the paint. It's actually really important. So the lesson here is don't get lazy, store them nicely in, in an area. And again, these kind of just worked their way to the bottom because I don't use them a whole lot. And it did this, so this is kind of useless. So moving on, I used 101, which is a specific um, type of, it's a foam uh, cut compound for foam, obviously. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna use 205 with the yellow and it's coming out great. So this is kind of the, the trick to this particular car, and I, again, I have no idea until I get here and figure it out and I say, okay, let me shoot a video and try to give people a heads up like, hey, this is a possibility. So something this old, sometimes I can get away with a microfiber cutting pad and blow it out every 30 seconds, but that's kind of annoying. On an old red car I did here at Speed Sport Tuning, which is where we are today, I used a, a sanding disc because there was so much coming off, I just wanted to sand it down. In this case, it's right in between. This is when you use foam. So we're gonna keep working on this put a really uh, nice shine on it, have it look great, but I'm not gonna start going wet sanding. Again, this is an unrestored. I'm gonna pull you into the front later on and I'll show you some rock chips. We're gonna keep those rock chips there because that's what they want, no problem. So uh, yeah, got a lot of work ahead of us, but I wanted to show you that little uh, piece there. Let's move on. All right guys, we've been working on this car for a couple of days and it's looking really good. Now, I originally thought that we were gonna keep uh, this paint unrestored, meaning all these little rock chips here, we're gonna keep it unrestored, untouched up um, for the museum. <clears throat> Late last night I got a phone call and some things have changed and uh, now we wanna actually touch it up. So I wanna show you how to do that. Luckily, in the glove box um, from overseas, they, they sent over very specific paint and it matches really well. What's the point of this? I'm gonna show you a pretty cool trick. Uh, I, I've talked about it in the past. Um, I haven't really showed it uh, in a long time, but this is the Lowell Cornell pen. It's a fine line painting pen. And I'll, I'll take it out of the case, or this little wrapper here, as you can see, I'll zoom in. Now, this you can get on online, Amazon, whatever, for 10 bucks. 
and it is a super precise pen. You have to do a few little tricks I'm gonna show you in a second to get it to kinda sort of like prime the pump. I'll, I'll show you, there's a little canister that you have to kinda get going and until you get that, that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Once you get it, I'll hammer this whole thing out. But there's just so many, there's zillions of little marks here. Now in reality, you know, maybe we would repaint it if it was a, a car that we you know, wanted, you know, start from scratch kind of thing. But this one, they just wanna take the edge off of it. So this is what I'm gonna use right now. I'll pull the camera in, show you these little rock chips, take this apart and show you the steps. Let's do this. Okay, as I'm taking this apart, you'll notice there's a few little things that come in the package right here. You have, all right, that's everything in the package. You have the actual tool. There's a top, because to, this is a bit sharp. You see that there? There's a little reservoir right there, right? Can you see it? Oop, now you go. Can you see it there? All right, and then, so let's put this back on. And then there's a pipe cleaner, super, super thin. I don't know if you can see that right there. Can you see that against my hand? And then you take this, and you're going to run it in the pipe later on to clean it out. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So don't lose these pieces right there. This is what comes in the kit. Before we get started with actually touching the 911 up, what I did was I put a bit of isopropyl alcohol and I just cleaned everything up, make sure all the scratches and all the chips are, don't have any oil in them, otherwise the paint will stick. Okay, so here's your, your pen. So you pop off this red part, put that down. The reason it's on there is, I don't know if you can see, I'll put my hand in the background. Do you see that? Maybe I'll put it against my shirt. There's a little, fine little tip there and it's pretty sharp so can you see it in the background against my finger so it's very very sharp well that's a good thing and the reason it's a good thing is it's very very fine so now you have your paint doesn't need to look like a nail polish again this is from um, overseas um, let's use the good one uh, so you have your paint now it can come directly from a dealership or not here's the tricky part so you're going to take your paint pen you're going to put it on like this and you're gonna dip you're gonna catch do you see that I'm catching the paint in the little uh, thing that looks like a pipe so I'm trying to fill up this area right here Does that makes sense so I'm gonna keep doing it until it fills up now the trick is you're just gonna get it just enough to the top as cleanly as possible and then once it's full which it is right now I don't know if you can see that without me tipping it over can you see that against my hand I'll zoom in then you have to tap uh, to kind of knock the paint down into this little needle so let me I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the camera off right now and I'll go in I'll zoom in close so you can see better what I'm talking about once it's locked and loaded then you can just keep going all day long. We can talk about cleaning it afterwards, but once you get used to this process, it is so, so, so fine and precise. It's, it's a beautiful thing, much finer than, let's say, the actual brush that comes with the, uh, with the touch-up. So let me pull the camera in and show you right now. This is kind of hard to film, but there it is. So I spent the last hour or so touching it up and it looked absolutely spectacular. So you have your touch-up pen here and you gotta do this quickly so it doesn't dry. Take a little isopropyl alcohol, fill it in a cup, take your pen and swoosh it around. Now the thing is that this pen is so fine, I can start to see some paint coming out now. It's so fine that uh, you're gonna have to use the little tube cleaner, little pipe cleaner that they, that they give you. So, here's the pipe cleaner. See it there? I'll put it against the background. I don't know if you can see that, it's so thin. So you're gonna take your pipe cleaner and you're gonna stick it in the little, con in the little uh, container there. So put this down, stick it through the bottom 
that, see it's in there now? You're gonna clean it out and spin it. And then you're gonna go from the top. Just be careful not to push too, too hard. Otherwise it'll bend uh, this very flexible piece of metal. There it is. So you're gonna keep doing this and basically clean it with rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, whatever you can. And uh, clean it out, get it ready for the next one for uh, touch up. All right, so the last thing I need to do is we're gonna leave it, let it set overnight, maybe put, check it over again tomorrow, and then tomorrow afternoon, time to go deliver it to the MoMA. Pretty exciting. All right, well, I'm back this morning to double check my work. I let it sit overnight to dry, and there's a few spots I may add a little extra touch up, but uh, overall, it's looking pretty good. Now, this afternoon, we're gonna be pushing this car outside. It's gonna go on a trailer and head down to Manhattan to the Museum of Modern Art. Understandably so, I can't exactly film in there because as everybody knows, it's one of the most prestigious uh, museums in the world. So we're gonna let them do their thing and then hopefully come back in uh, as this gets set up and, and uh, you know take some pictures. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's recap uh, what happened on this car. Well, when we polished it with the microfiber or compounded with a microfiber cutting pad, so much uh, paint came off because it's very old and brittle and it just came off at a very high rate. And you know I'm a huge fan of the microfiber cutting pad. It overwhelmed the pad. And so either you had to blow it out a lot or add more lubrication. It just kind of slowed the whole process down. So what we did was we changed to a foam pad, a foam pad that could accept uh, more residue. And so you could polish at a longer, for a longer time. And we did that with the, uh, uh, with the Air Force One video. So um, that was number one. Number two is we used the Lowell Cornell pen to, uh, to touch it up. It's the fine painting pen. They actually use it to you know, do signatures and things like that and some you know, artist uh, you know, paintings or what have you. So the upside to that is you can really kind of get in there and you're not gonna put a huge bubble like when you're using a touch up pen and then have to come back and sand it down. So the, the downside is it does take a little bit longer. The upside is you make up time on the back end because you don't have to necessarily sand everything. I really, really love the pen. One of the quick you know, things you need to think about if you do decide to get it, one, it's really cheap. So you know, it's like 10 bucks or something like that. So it's a throwaway item. Um, is if you do something like this where there's tons of rock chips, you're gonna have to use um, the little, uh, little plunger that they give you, you know, to, to kind of clean out the needle because over time as that the touch up paint dries it'll start to narrow the, the hole of the needle and sometimes when you tap it it won't come out but if you take that little plunger they give you a little pipette and go in and out uh, you'll you actually pull out you'll see a little blob that comes out meaning of dry paint and then you're ready to go again as you refill so those are a couple little tips if you guys have any questions, you know where to find me, Larry at AmmoNYC.com or visit my website, AmmoNYC.com for more helpful how-to videos uh, detailing your car. And of course, visit the uh, Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan to hopefully see this in the future. And uh, <laughs> it's been a real honor and a privilege to have a car come over from overseas and, uh, and prepare it and, and do something this exciting. So thank you to everyone who's, uh, who is involved. This is a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.